Uh, we also producing uh, dry maize on, 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 dry, on dry land of 150 hectares, rotating it with soya bean. We also have about 56 uh, beef head. Uh, today I'll be speaking with you guys or speaking to you guys about potato production. Can I, if you agree, speak uh, in a practical point of view? So, uh, but yes, I'll touch into uh, basics uh, or a bit of theory, but if you guys allow me, can I be practical as much as I can and uh, present it on how we, 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 we've experienced everything on the ground? Uh, so on our 15 hectares, we plant uh, cabbages, spinach, green mealies, and potatoes. So we're rotating them on a seasonal basis. Usually, if we planted 10 hectares of cabbage, we would plant five hectares of potatoes. Uh, or maybe have potatoes on, on, on the whole 15 hectares, or have five hectares of cabbage, two hectares of, two hectares of spinach, and have sometimes our focus uh, enterprises under irrigated land. So on, or I will not be speaking on uh, dry maize, soil, soya bean, and, and I've spoke with you guys with cabbage production. So I think in my in my slides, you we'll only see pictures. Uh, as I as I said, it's 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 based on experience. And in my presentation, I think I have one slide that is missing. The slide should be speaking about the importance of C to C. Uh, if you want to produce potatoes, it's very important. Yes, I know soils information is important, climate information is important, uh, market information is important in terms of when or how to plant uh, potatoes. But the most important thing that we tend to ignore is a seed. Um, seed is very important, especially in potatoes, because there's uncertified seed and the certified seed. Uh, uncertified seed is the seed that you anyone would plant for themselves from, from their potatoes and sell them. A certified seed, there are people who are selected or who qualify under a uh, West grower. West grower, I think it's for South Africa is the main main or umbrella producer or uh, umbrella person who sells to farmers potato seeds. So they have farms where they produce potato seed in controlled environment. Choosing a seed is very important when you when you want to potatoes either for table potatoes or chips, fried chips. Uh, uh, there's uncertified and certified seed. Uncertified seed is the seed that can be produced by anyone, any farmer. That's where if uh, I planted uh, potatoes last season, I can take the rejected potatoes and treat them as a seed. Now, there are chances that that seed is diseased or it will, it will not perform uh, as a certified seed. Now, a certified seed is sold under West Grower as an umbrella organization. So West Grower has farmers that produce seed for them. There's, there's a process of selecting them. Uh, there are many, many things to follow so that you can qualify to... to I'm not sure about the systems that they follow, but. I know that the process is very long and uh, you, you have to have all the equipment to produce for them. Uh, I think on, on the seed uh, for now, uh, I don't know if I can check if everyone has heard me or what, so that I do not re repeat again. Did everyone get yeah, the part yeah. of seed? Yeah, we got that. Um... You can proceed, I think. Your line is better. Okay, so we can continue. 
at JJ Farming, we have red, deep well drain soils, and uh, loamy clay soils. Um, uh, it's, it's, it's not advisable to plant potatoes on clay, uh, clay soils because there's that uh, ability of shrinking and expanding uh, when they are dry or, or wet. Now it's always advisable to plant them on more sandier soils or loam soils to get to get high yields and uh, soils with a moderate drainage of, of, of water. So at JJ Farming, we, we, we did uh, soil samples <clears throat> and it was required or recommended that we lime our soils with one ton per hectare. So the production was on seven hectares this time. Uh, we harvested last year on April, yeah, uh, March, April, May. We harvested about three months. We planted using a two-row planter. Uh, it was calibrated to plant 120 bags of 25 kgs of seed. The count of seed inside a bag was 250 uh, seeds per bag. Uh, so you can do the maths of 250 times 120 and you will have an idea how many plants we had per hectare. Uh, mostly in the Eastern Cape, we're planting a variety, three varieties, Cifra, Mondial, and uh, Panamera. Uh, I think in KZN, they, they, they can even plant more. The reason we're planting those it's because we we do not have any factory for 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 chips uh, or making fries so we we only planting for table potatoes now mondial gives you a medium to large size same as Zifra. if you you go to kzn you can even get kzn and limpompo you can even get varieties that gives you uh, pure, pure large, just large for, for, for fried chips. Uh, so going back to, back to JJ, the planter is planting uh, two, sorry, 120 bags of 25 kgs per hectare, and it puts six bags of uh, fertilizer on the soils. The fertilizer that we used is 434. I'll explain why. Or you can use 515. Uh, 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 potatoes are a heavy feeder of potassium. So, whatever fertilizer type that you are using, you have to make sure that it's high in potassium. Uh, nitrogen, I think it, it takes about 180 kgs, or it uses about 180 kgs. So, bear in mind, there's nitrogen in the soil and you're planting with uh, nitrogen, so you will have to have soil samples so that you can get recommendations of how much you should get into your soils through fertilizers. Um, you have to top, uh, top dress with KCL. KCL gives you potassium, just potassium. Uh, potatoes takes about 390 kgs of potassium during growing stage until harvesting. Uh, I think it takes about 90 kgs of phosphorus. So you can see uh, the difference that it's 180 nitrogen, 90 kgs phosphorus, and it's, it's 390 kgs of potassium. So it's a must to top dress with KCL. KCL is a single fertilizer that supplies only potassium. So you plant with a complete fertilizer, be it 434515, then you have to top dress with KCL. And again, you have to top dress with LAN because you, nitrogen is very mobile in, in your soils. If you are getting, it will, uh, it will leach. So at some point, especially before flowering, you have or oh, we top dressed with about, about six bags of LAN before before our potatoes flowered. Uh, uh, but in Tim Kulu, you can go to a next slide. Uh, 
Okay, this this is how we top dressed our KCL. We used a, a mounted yeah, fertilizer spreader. Sorry, Opa, can you mute? Okay, we use the fertilizer spreader uh, to spread four bags of KCL before flowering. Uh, Mr. Mtimkul, you can go to the next slide. Again, uh, I think I've touched almost everything on on fertilizer program and planting. Now the next important thing is spraying. So what we did at JJ is this: straight after planting, we sprayed uh, with the Frontier Optima uh, pre-emergence uh, herbicide. We also sprayed with either Karate or Lambda. Uh, for worms, 14 days after germination, we sprayed either methamidophos uh, or, or camprin, any pesticide that is registered to spray those. In case that it can, it, it can be far depending on the service providers who are around, but they can recommend which which chemical to spray with. Uh, 14 days after, so we spray that. And we also sprayed for for for, for cutware. We used karate. You can use karate or lambda herbicides. Then the program goes like this: every after two weeks, we sprayed with one of these fungicides. So if week we sprayed with aroxy, the fungicide. Next after next two weeks, we would spray with. Copster. We're using a boom sprayer, as you can see uh, on the slide, uh, because uh, you have to make sure that you fight with fungicide in potatoes, because you never know what's happening under your soils, and most of the diseases that you get under your soils, it's, it's, it's fungal diseases. So that's one thing that you have to fight for, and uh, very important, you have to reach before your potatoes uh, be before your potatoes uh, flower. After ridging, if there are any weeds, you will have to spray with a chemical called bentazo. However, it only kills broadleaf, broadleaf weeds. So if you, you have issues of grass in your potatoes, you have to spray with a chemical called scop. It only kills grass weed. Uh, yeah, I think, I think on the, on the, on the spraying program, I've covered almost everything. Mr. Mtimkulu, you can go to the next slide. All right. Um, this thing is frozen. Tim Kulu, are you winning? Go back. Okay. So this is how your, your potatoes should look like. Can be more. Uh, but uh, this is how it should look. Uh, after top dressing with KCL, uh, you can go forward, Mr. Tim Kool. After top dressing with KCL and after top, uh, top dressing with uh, LAN, this was before our potatoes flowered. Uh, that's a picture taken from one of our hectares, but almost every hectare was like this. I think what we should do is this. 
uh, so that we open for discussion or questions before I go to, to the next slides, because the next slides speak to harvesting and packaging. Uh, can we, can Tim Kulu, if you allow me, can I open for questions under production uh, before we go to, to harvesting slide, if it's fine? That's okay, I think. At the moment, I don't see any hand. Okay. So it either was too clear or <laughs> no one. <had> <laughs> I guess, I guess um, it was too clear. Tim Kul, just before okay. Mzi uh, carries on, um, just a quick question on the um, spraying. Okay. No, 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 no. I've, I've got a, I've got a question on the spray. Yeah, okay. Um, yes, you can go ahead. Yes. Yeah. So, um, I, I see you, you speak quite a lot of on, on spraying, but my, my question is just on, um, do you, um, sometimes find that you, you don't see, um, is, is, is it, is it a must that you always spray or do you first um like do a trial and error to to see if there's a need for you to to spray okay um for insects it's not a must you have to go through your fields and see if there are any damages or there are any signs of insects however if it's in summer uh with high rains uh the high temperatures high chances that you get high high levels of pests uh, however with fungicides it, it's not easy or yeah. if you identify fungicide it would be too late uh, however you can still control it but fungicides affect your potatoes underground so mm. you don't know what's happening underground until you see the signs uh on the on the vegetation or, or uh, above your soil so with so, fungicides you have, to, you have to spray every after two weeks but for pesticides you can always go through your fields and see if there are any pests or any signs that uh, or anything that eats your leaves okay so it's not always a case of spraying it sometimes um, comes back to what you actually see so there are times where you will do away without spray on your insect side Yes. Okay. 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 Yes. Um, However, if if you go to a dealer or a person who sells chemicals, the person will tell you to always spray because remember they are in business. You have to run out of the chemicals so that you can come back and spray again and buy from them. Yeah. Yeah. No, they're like that. Uh, it's safe. Yeah. I see. Um, Sadiki. Oh, yes, uh, thank you very much. Uh, I just want you to touch on the schedule of irrigation, like how do you uh, schedule your irrigation and also maybe after irrigating, do you apply spraying or yeah, but my question actually, is, I'm just interested in the issues of spraying uh, in a week, how many times do you spray? and then the type of irrigation system that you you use. I think if you can touch base on that one, I'll be very much happy. Thank you. Okay, thank you, sir. Um, with spray program, I think, but I can repeat for you. We were spraying every uh, two weeks, uh, but we sprayed uh, the first spray before, after, straight after we planted. Now, if I go straight to the uh, our irrigation schedule, we are using a drag line sprinkler irrigation. Um, I think there's about 12 sprinklers per hectare running at a cycle of about two, 2.5 hours to three hours, then we shift them. Uh, yeah, because of the drag line, you have to always shift them. 
So uh, I think two and a half to three hours gives us about 250 to 300 milliliters of, of water into, into our soils. Uh, however, if it rained, we will have to, to adapt and see when we, we can uh, irrigate again. But we irrigated once a week. Because remember, as much as we are irrigating on potatoes, potatoes can even plant it on dry land. Irrigation, it's an addition for, for more yields. So uh, to make sure that you reduce ch chances of favoring fungicide, because fungicide likes wet soils and, uh, and uh, with high temperatures. So you have to make sure that uh, you get uh, a time where your potatoes are in dry land, then you irrigate again. So we were irrigating once a week, Putting in our soil, uh, in our soil, about two hundred and fifty to three hundred milliliters. Uh, yeah, once a week. I think uh, I've answered your question. But if you still want to know more, you can ask. So we're using an electric pump. All right, all right. Now, uh, thank you very much. That's the question that I was interested to because. Uh, sometimes where I am working, you'll find that we are just walking around uh, the farms and then somewhere, somehow we get those kind of questions. You'll find that people are irrigating more often and then they are getting attacked by nematodes and everything. So I was so pleased to hear that today, um, this one, it is a practical uh, uh, presentation and you are doing this thing on the ground. So next time, even myself now, I know at least I would advise there and there. Thank you very much. That was my question. Thank you. Thank you. I see another hand here. It's Colin. Yes, uh, I wanted to check if uh, how much can uh, it cost per hectare on, on this kind of irrigation and spraying of these chemicals? And is there any profit afterwards? Is there any profit? Okay. <laughs> uh, if you have your calculator next to you, uh, however, it will depend on where you based in terms of uh, the cost of inputs. But now we're having a challenge of high diesel, high uh, cost of fertilizers with nitrogen especially. But the time we were planting, uh, a hectare costed about 50,000. Breaking it down in this way, a seed, a bag of seed, which is a 25 kg bag, uh, I think it costed about 230. So you can times that by 120 per hectare, 250. The chemicals, the spray program, it was about 11,000 for the chemicals. Now it's not easy to, to break them into per hectare because you can buy five liters that can spray five hectares for the whole season and you still have about half, uh, half that five liter or you have a liter left that you can add when you're planting potatoes and or you, that you can add on when you are spraying next season. So it's not easy to track down cost of chemicals uh, per hectare. Uh, you can have chemicals on 20 liters that you can spray over one season and 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 it's gone you can have chemicals uh, where you can spray and use that one liter for two seasons very difficult to see but what i can tell you is this it costs about eleven thousand. Uh, the, the spray program uh, costed us about eleven thousand. Uh, fertilizer or was 500 uh, rand. Now it's about 1.2. LAN was 350. Uh, remember, we used uh, about six LANs per hectare. Now LAN is 800. KCL was 550. I think it's still about around 600. And cost of diesel was uh, 14 rands. Now it's at 27 rands. So, uh now it's not easy to to say 
you can make make profit now because the issue that farmer potato farmers are facing is this everything went up potato cost fertilizers diesel but the price of potatoes in the market is still the same you still uh, we're still selling a bag at 35.5 and 50 rands uh, per bag of 10 kgs uh, to supermarkets but now yes everyone uh, is has planted and i think few farmers are will, will be harvesting in december january and feb that's where you will see a drop in prices of potato uh, prices of potatoes but for now yes last season we did make a profit but uh, when i'm speaking uh, on the point of harvesting our, our highlight the challenges that we came across that cut our profit down only if we had uh, uh, the infrastructure that I'll, I'll be speaking to uh, where when I'm speaking about harvesting, then we'll have high profit levels. But uh, potatoes have profit unless uh, you don't have the machinery on the ground. So if you have everything, potatoes are pro but now I cannot say they have problems because everything went up and I haven't planted potatoes. I think I've covered your your, your question at some point. Yes, I, 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 it's understandable. Thanks very much. Thank you. Okay. Uh, thank you. Moholo. Okay, thank, thank you, Doc. Uh, what, what an interesting presentation. I, I just want to seek a clarity, but I think you touched on it. I, I can see that I, okay. I just want to, yes, but I just want to find out about your fertilizer spreader. So first of all, I, will, I, I heard you saying you, it, it, normally you used about, I'm not sure, but you will clarify me. You used about six bags per hectare. So actually I wanted to ask yes. actually the question, you wanted to ask, I think you answered it, but I'll ask the second question because my first question was, are you able practically or can you tell us or are you able to quantify when you use the spread, the amount of fertilizer that you apply per act? Are you able to quantify yes, maybe, maybe based on factors like your, 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 your tractor speed and your PTO and other, and other factors? Okay. Uh, yes, Maybe. we are okay. able to quantify. Okay. Hello. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can I ask another question, or, or you you want to answer the first one? Okay, it's fine. We can have a second. Yeah, but what is the capacity of of your of your spread as well? looking in terms of maybe refilling it because i want so people using the spreader before it moves from one end to another end when it's in the middle of the the farm then there's nothing inside it and then they have to go and refill stuff so i just want i'm asking it in terms of uh, the work rate that you need to but the question is simply to say what is the capacity of the spreader thank you Okay. Uh, okay. The first question: Yes, we are able to to quantify the amount of bags that we put because we've calibrated the spreader, same as the the boom sprayer. We've calibrated it. Uh, we're using uh, a PTO turning of for, for, uh, 540 e, which is 540. Because so the PTO turns 540 times per second. Uh, the speed of a tractor we use, oh, it's, I think it's at eight, eight, sometimes we use 10, but we are uh, in potatoes, in maize we're using 10, in potatoes we're using eight with the revs of 150, uh, sorry, 1,500 1, revs per minute. So a combination of uh, a gear low four, it uh, gives you a speed of 8 or 10 with the revs at 150. So the PTO, you put it on 540 economy. Then you have to, to, to set the spreader. That's a, 
you, if it's calibrated and set it, it will give us that six bags per hectare. If we we change it when we're putting KCL in, which is four bags per. But what I saw is this: uh, it's, it's it's very accurate when it's applied by hand than a spreader. And remember, with a spreader, you'll have a bit of waste. But again, it's a, it's a the argument between creating jobs and uh, doing what you want to achieve in a quick way by a tractor. So by, I don't want to go into that argument of comparing a tractor with with applying with, uh, by, by, by a labor or manual labor. Uh, the quantity of, of our spreader, uh, we have a 500 liters, which is it's a 500 kg spreader. We also have a 1,200 liters, which is it's a 1.2 tons. 1.2 tons, we're using it uh, when we're applying on maize because we have long fields where if you've refilled, you have to take about uh, four to five hectares before you're refilling. But with potatoes, our land is uh, set it into half a hectare, one hectare. So we, there's no need of using the big spreader. So we're using the, uh, the 500 liter spreader or the 500 kg spreader. Um, Mokono, okay. Are you covered? Yeah, I think I'm covered, and and, and thank you for the clarity. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I think Kim Z, you can carry on. I don't see any hand. Okay, that's why you can go to the next slide. Okay. So depending on a season. Or the variety that you've planted. Uh, it takes about four months, four to five months, sometimes three months, as I said, depending on the variety to harvest potatoes. Uh, if you if you planted with a potato plant, I would advise that you you harvest with a potato lifter because it would be a high labor intensive to harvest. You know those fox bait. Uh, and the damage on the potatoes would be very high. So we used uh, a two-row uh, potato harvest or lifter to harvest our potatoes, uh, employing about 30 to 50 people to pick up the potatoes. So uh, what I've noticed is this, the cost of produce of production, the actual production before harvesting, can sometimes be less than the uh, the cost of harvesting. Uh, potatoes uh, potatoes are very heavy, and they are very labor intensive when 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 they are harvested. Uh, and I'll list those costs as, as as we go on because that's where we experienced high costs in harvesting. So we use the two row uh, lift it lifts the potatoes. Okay, before you do that, if you have weeds on your fields. Uh, you'd spray with a non-selective uh, herbicide, not Roundup, because Roundup goes to your soils. So the ones that are contact herbicides, they just kill what is up, uh, above your above the soils. One of them is um, Paraquat, uh, and I think uh, uh, there's also Paraquat. So it takes about two days and it bends everything so that it's very easy for 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 the potato lifter to lift the potatoes, uh, you can go to the next slide. Put them to cool. Okay, so we had two markets, or we have two markets. We have formal market, uh, the guys who want uh, the potatoes graded, sorted, and packed, washed graded, sorted, and packed in 10 kg bags. Those are your super supermarkets or the, the fresh produce markets. We also had an informal market. Uh, the people, uh, the villagers around us and the local stores. So that's a, that's a, it's one of the very, very easy markets. It's, it's the, the informal market 
or the local people or the rural people around us because straight from harvesting or straight from picking it's, it's packed in 10 kg bags and we can sell to them but it's very costly to to wash great pack and sell to 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 to, to formal market so that's one of the costs uh, that's one where that's one of the places where we experienced a high cost because we do not have a potato washer and uh, we, we we still going I think or maybe in two or three years we'll have our potato washer so what will happen is this the people that we employed the 30 to 50 people will pick the potatoes and put them on the thousand kg bags uh, we will we'll have two tractors one tractor is harvesting a second tractor as lifting the thousand bags, packing them on that eight ton tractor, a sort of truck. A eight ton truck uh, loads about nine, nine bags, 9,000 kg bags, which is nine ton. Uh, potato washer is 50 kilometers away from us. That truck is employed, sorry, it's, 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 it's a rented. Uh, a load is 1,400, taking, taking it from our farm to the market, uh, sorry, to the potato washer. That's one big cost that we, 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 we experienced because we had about 18 to 20 loads of those trucks. You're looking at about 30,000 going to trucks to deliver, to take unwashed potatoes to a formal, uh, sorry, to a potato washer. Second higher cost was uh, labor. Uh, we paying our uh, our casual labor, or the people who were picking the potatoes, 120 rand per day, uh, and we buying them food. So it should have been 150, but we are buying them food with the 30 rands because we we came across a, a point where if we are paying them 150 and say they must have their own food. Some people do not bring uh, their lunch, so we're buying lunch for everyone with their 30 rents and we're paying them 120 per day. Uh, so the 120 per day by 50 people, sometimes 30 people, times about three months because we have a state for about three months. That's a huge cost uh, that we came across. Uh, so already you can see that it's very costly to have as potatoes more than producing them. But if we had a potato washer on the farm, we would say minus the cost of hiring a truck to load the thousand uh, bags to the former, uh, sorry, to the potato washer. Tim could we can go to a next slide. Okay. Now, the, when, when, when the trucks go to the potato washer, okay, there's a forklift that offloads the 1,000 kg bags, and the 1,000 kg bags uh, are offloaded to bins that can be lifted by a, a lifter, uh, and it can be inserted on the potato washer machine. So the in the potato washer machine, there should be 20 people who are working on the machine. Now we came across a challenge of uh, the guys who have the potato washer will bring in 10 people and every day we'll have to transport 10 more people from the farm to work with the people who, who, who operates the machines. So, so to make 20 people. It costed us about four and 50 cent a 10 kg bag to wash, sorry, to wash pack, grade, uh, and sort 10 kg bags. Again, that's another cost. Uh, it also costed us 12.5% to get the market to sell our potatoes. So uh, along the way, we, we lost a lot, especially on, on harvesting. But if we, I promise you, if we had the machine, or if our target market was informal market, only info, but the, 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 the scale that we were producing in formal market, I think we'll be selling 
500 to 1,000 bags uh, in two weeks or per week. And we produced about 15,000 bags. So uh, it would be very slow. It would take time to sell our potatoes into informal market. And informal market prices are very good, uh, more than the, the formal market prices. So even the, 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 the agent has 12% out of our our selling price in potatoes. So yeah, Mr. Mtumkul, you can go to the next slide. So yeah, the, the, this is us packing, uh, washing, uh, sorting. So the machine sorts and grade uh, the potatoes into small, extra small, 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 medium, uh, uh, small, medium. Uh, there's a large, medium, large, and extra large. So uh, it has sections that grades the potatoes, uh, uh, that sorts the potatoes. So you have the 20 people who are looking for damaged potatoes or potatoes that uh, would be rejected or would be make, uh, made second grade. Uh, yeah. Mr. Mtimkulu, you can go to the next slide. So the, these are our potatoes ready to be sold. So uh, uh, this was in the Kai Fresh market in Mtata. Uh, they were sold under uh, an agent, but we, we have an opportunity to not sell our potatoes under an agent and take our potatoes direct to a supermarket. However, uh, if you've washed about 5,000 bags uh, in two days, it's, it's very it's very difficult to move them to, to supermarkets because supermarkets would only order or maybe eight pallets. Pallet is made up of uh, 100 bags or 110 bags. So we have uh, maybe, we had about two, three supermarkets under us and the demand is very high during the time where uh, there's pension uh, pension time. So we had that challenge. So we had to sell them under an agent. Uh, Mr. Tim Kulu can go to our next slide. Uh, this is us trying to sell our potatoes by, our, by ourselves to cut the commission fee, which is 12.5%. So while the market was selling our potatoes, through other agent, we were also trying to sell as much as we can from the side to the people uh, who are selling on the streets, uh, the hawkers, uh, to some supermarkets, and even the, the places where uh, potato fries are made. I think we are almost done with my presentation. I think this is uh, an, uh, our last slide. So yeah, thank you. So. Uh, that's what that's it for the day. But the only cost that we the only high cost that we came across is harvesting cost more than production cost. And uh, prices of production inputs and diesel and everything went up, but the prices for potatoes or selling price is still the same. So thank you. I think uh more ad advices can come in. We, we're not commercial farmers as yet. We're still looking for advices on some things that we're not doing correctly or kind of things that we can do better. Uh, and even questions or comments can come in. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, um, Z. Um, that was a um, wonderful, wonderful uh, presentation. And um, I think I would open the floor just for questions and comments. If there are any. I see Colin. I'll start with Colin and then um, Rapetso. Thank, thanks very much for the wonderful presentation. Anyway, you did try, you did answer 
my concern with regard to the formal market versus informal market when it comes to prices, because I know the formal market will di dictate the price, while the yes. informal mm -hmm. one you can be able to tell them how much you want to sell your product. So, but how, 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 how if, if you decide not to sell to the formal market, what happens? Do you think your product will get uh, rotten? Okay. Um, we, 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 okay, we planted our potatoes in September, right? We should have harvested in December, January, and February, but we had high rainfalls. Uh, we, had, we, we had no chance to harvest. So the time we were harvesting in, in March, April, and May, uh, it was almost late for us to have, so we didn't get a grade, uh, a lot of a grade, because we already had some potatoes that were already rotten. rotten. So I think if if we had a chance to sell after four months, straight after four months, we would sell to informal market, uh, not minding uh, the, taking uh, the process of selling for about five months. So. Uh, we we had a pressure from rains, and I think last year it rained until about May, May June. So we had to uh, quickly harvest and sell everything once. No, thanks, thanks very much. Well, thank you very much for a nice presentation. My question is uh, around the cost because I, I heard you mention that the cost of harvesting are very much high. So I was just wondering based on the things that I've observed. So I've lived in Russia for like three years and they, they do have a huge market for potatoes as well. But what I saw is, and I've I think I heard you in your presentation when you mentioned the washing process and the packaging that the costs are also high there. So what I saw what they were doing in Russia is they were selling unwashed potatoes. So meaning they're cutting the cost for washing. But I would think that in South Africa, maybe the market or the, the general population wouldn't appreciate that. Is that something that uh, you guys as the you, in the potato market or the potato industry, you could try to encourage the population to, you know, try to accept unwashed potatoes so that you guys can cut the cost there, mm -hmm. since you're saying the price also haven't changed, but the cost have went up. Okay. One thing I can tell you is this, most people uh, in terms of durability, they opt for unwashed potatoes, but the, but I don't know. Maybe it's 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 for formality or hygiene reasons, or for what? But the formal market prefers uh, washed potatoes, and washed potatoes would have high prices, selling prices than unwashed. So if you're selling unwashed, or maybe they will say sell it to us about twenty five rands, but it's if it's washed. It would be 35 friends. So at some point we are being pushed to sell washed. But for the guys who are selling outside the hawkers, they preferred and they prefer unwashed. But customers at some point prefer washed. But what in terms of durability after you've bought them, uh, unwashed would uh, stay longer than uh, washed because. Too much handling in terms of sorting, grading the machine who that wa washes the potatoes. Uh, it may, potatoes do not uh, like too much handling, so that process causes less durability when you bought them or when you have them uh, in your house. Whereas washed potatoes can, sorry, unwashed potatoes can stay longer, but you know, if you are a farmer, you always go try and go for for higher prices more than le less. But if we, in in terms of cost, uh, washed potatoes is very costly. 
uh, with a higher price selling price uh, unwashed potatoes uh, that's less costly with uh, so I think it's something that we should look into. Yes, in South Africa, there is a market for unwashed, but it's, it's very scarce. Uh, I think, yeah, there's a guy who exports uh, them from, who was in Cockstead. His name is Ndongeni, Ndongeni Mishek. He, uh, he exports unwashed potatoes. So that's one thing that we, 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 you want to do, and there's Frymex in case then they recently approached us. They want unwashed potatoes. They will wash them for for uh, by themselves. So I think uh, we we learning as we go go going uh, or as we going on on the process. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, thanks. Thank you very much uh, for the questions. Um, is there any other hand? Okay. In the absence of other hands, I actually wanted to ask you earlier, um, about okay. your irrigation. About irrigation, you're saying you're irrigating uh, once a week, but you don't irrigate if let's if um, if you had rains um, in that week. So the question I want to ask is that how how do you know that you received enough rains? So like, do you are using a rain gauge or you do testing the moisture in the soil and things like that? <laughs> uh, okay, Mr. Jim, yeah, Dr. Jim Cool. No, we do not have any rain gauge. Uh, even when we are irrigating, we do not have a rain cage as yet or sensors. Uh, mm -hmm. What we do, we just go into the soils and dig about 30, sorry, 15 to 20 centimeter hole and check mm -hmm. if it's still wet or, or dry, then we irrigate. So for now, we want to go to that level, but for now, we, 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 we're using that method. So we don't have any rain. Well, we do have a rain gate outside, but uh, you know the sensor that you, you put in your soils and it will tell you the moisture content. We do not have that. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, all right. So do you you just uh, dig the hole, the, the the pit or the hole, and then yeah. observe? Just have a look, or you take yeah, the sample and squeeze it moisture. or something like that. No, we we just observe the moisture on the on that pit that we dig. We learn with dig. You just see if there's still water or it's still, it's still moist. Then if it's dry, we irrigate again. But if it's still moist, then... Because, you know, if you're looking uh, above the soil, it might be it might seem as if it's dry, but when you're digging, you can actually see that uh, on the rooting zone, it's uh, that wetter. Yeah, okay. All right, great. No, thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Uh, colleagues, I don't see any hand right now, and my assumption is that we are all happy. So, um, I think we might want to stop here uh, for tonight. And uh, before we go, I would like to uh, once again thank you, thank uh, Umzi for for talking to us this evening. I mean, as always, we always learn <laughs> when you 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 know you you're with us here. And um and um yeah. Oh I see I see there's a hand there before I close. I see Copano. Uh, thank you, Doctor and uh, MZ for the good uh, presentation. Even though I missed uh, most parts of the presentation, but in the beginning, uh, I had that um, Z mentioned that uh, there are, uh, he's planting other crops, but it's like uh, potatoes is the is the main. I mean, the potato is the main crop. So I just want to ask if uh, he consider a planting potatoes throughout the year uh, around the area. Maybe if there's a possibility of doing that. Okay, 
Uh, yes, I did mention that uh, potatoes is one main. Uh, second main is cabbage, then third is green meat. Uh, Eastern Cape will have frost issues in the winter, so we can plant. So we can only plant in September when it's starting to be warmer. September uh, later to, latest would be in January, our last last date of, of planting in January. Then uh, in May we, we 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 have winter, so we can only plant say two seasons maybe. If you plant it in September, you uh, harvest in December, then plant again. But with potatoes, you never plant on the same uh, hectares that you planted potatoes. Like you have to rotate and it rotate it uh, for about two years without planting potatoes because it's very he heavy on potassium. So if you're planting 10 hectares, have at least a land of 30 hectares so that you can plant the 10 hectares on next plot. And next day you plant uh, the 10 hectares on, on plot three. Then only in year four, you can replant the first plot that you planted with potatoes again. So yeah, no, we cannot plant uh, throughout the year. I think only in some parts of KZN and in Limpompo, there's no winter, so you can plant all year round. Uh, okay, thank you. Thank you. Thanks, thanks, Kopano. Uh, I see, I see, I see another hand. Letao. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, thank you very much. Um, this one is just the last one out of curiosity. Uh, in the beginning of your presentation, you have um, explained the soils that you have, uh, and then you've also mentioned that uh, obviously before you apply everything and whatever, you always make sure that you correct your pH and everything. So I just wanted to check when you correct your pH that side, do you go for liming straight or at some point do you consider gypsum? Because like um, obviously one thing I agree with you in terms of uh, saying that a potato, when you plant it, it requires a lot of uh, potassium because like somewhere, somehow, even when we are doing fertilizer recommendations, the fertilizer recommendations for potato, it is strictly different from other crops. And then obviously you would have to check your effective CEC in terms of your potassium and everything. And then in terms of uh, calcium and magnesium, most people, they prefer gypsum. So I just wanted to see on your side that in terms of improving your calcium, do you go for liming or do you consider gypsum? Thank you. Okay, I think that's something we we, we have to we have to put in our plans or consider. No, we never used gypsum because we had that knowledge that gypsum mm. is mainly for liming the the subsoils. So we were only using, I think it was calcium. Uh, uh, I forgot the name of the of the lime, but it's oh. the one that uh, limes the top soils. Okay, no, there's no we problem. Maybe use chips, yeah. Yeah, okay, no problem. Maybe we can just take it out of the presentation and then we engage about that one. Thank you. Okay. All right. All right. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, colleagues, I think, yeah, I had started um, wrapping up. So, yeah, once again, thank you very much, Mzi. And um, it's always a, it is always a pleasure to have you here. And I I believe that uh, we all learned something. Um, and I learned, I always learn. <laughs> uh, whenever we have a speaker here, I make sure that I learn something. So thank you very much, uh, Mzi, for your time and uh, for sharing your experience and your knowledge with us. Um, yeah. And, I mean, the, the work that you're doing, man, it's inspiring. Um, every time I look at what you do, even when you're sharing on Facebook and um, yeah, I'm always inspired by what you're doing. 
So thank you very much, man. Um, I'm sure you're inspiring a lot of people in this country. And yeah, thank you. Um, yes, <laughs> colleagues, thank oh, you very much. Thank you, thank you, Madam Tim Kuro. Thank you, good. Thanks, uh, uh, colleagues. Thank you very much for your time and for the for the questions and comments that you made here. And I hope to see you again in our next uh, next webinar, which will be on the twenty third of November. Have a good evening. Thank you. Okay. Thanks. Bye. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Thanks. Thank you. Bye. <laughs>